OKD Working Group meeting for February 1st of 2022. And we have got a, uh, a pretty quick agenda here, but we'll jump right into it. Don't forget to put your name in the attendees section of the ACMD document. Uh, drop the link in there and we can drop the link again. Um, and if you have any suggestions to modify the agenda, uh, let me know if there's anything you want to add to it. Um, all right, seeing nothing, let's uh, start out with uh, uh, release updates. So it looks like uh, Vadim did uh, uh, put some updates in there in terms of uh, the uh, latest for uh, OKD, and it looks like that there is a, a 4.10 um, code freeze, 4.11 nightlies are being prepared, and 4.10 is now uh, Fedora 35 based, and, and the 1.23 Kubernetes uh, rebase landed. Uh, expecting 1.22.5 rebase to land in 4.9 so that we could rebase 4.9 to F35. And um, the any questions about that or anything you want to talk about about that? Is that pretty pretty clear? Vadim uh, threw those in there. Seems pretty straightforward. We know anything about what's coming in 4.10? Uh, and 4.11? Because, uh, like, not. I don't remember I don't remember anyone saying anything about what's going on for those releases. No, and actually, you know, I think um, uh, Sandra made a good point, uh, you know, two meetings ago that, you know, we should get ahead of the ball here and start figuring out what is going to be um, uh, in future releases like 4.10, 4.11 so that we can promote them and uh, basically, uh, you know, be, get ahead of the game as opposed to sort of behind the game uh, or, or uh, you know, um, sort of playing catch up in terms of promoting OKD um, as the OCP releases come up. So let's find out who wants to take that as a task to uh, figure out uh, what is coming in 4.10 and 4.11. Anyone want to take that? All right, well, I guess I will take it and then we'll see where that goes. Um, asks. Uh, I have to say on that one, I haven't seen the Red Hat. Normally they do a really good presentation about the right. next release. I, yeah. have, I haven't seen any of that. Yeah, and that's why I, I have no idea what's going on for this because, like, I don't even think I've seen any external communication about it on the OpenShift uh, YouTube channel or anything. So, like, I literally have no clue what's going on. Yeah, usually they'll have that, like, hour and a half video meeting, and I haven't seen that pop up yet. Um, but, uh, okay, well, I will do some investigative work. Uh, so anything else on OKD itself? Uh, now moving on to uh, Fedora Core OS updates. Um, let's see something. Um, I wanted to say that um, in the absence, uh, I'm sorry, in the absence of of Timothy, uh, so 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 I'm from the MCO team, and, and we work we work very closely with the Core OS team, and I, we've been kind of doing a lot of work on our. Um, enhancement for for core os layering we're hoping to get that published very soon okay excellent that is good news i just pinged dusty to see maybe he'll pop in um to the meeting here to talk about any uh, fcos stuff we'll see what happens um okay let's move on from fcos stuff docs update brian take it away okay we had our docs meeting last last Tuesday. Um, again, it was a pretty quick meeting. Um, nothing really came up with the issues. We did continue the conversation around Slack channels. Um, and I think the conversation was that we want to keep 
uh, a, a presence in that um, Kubernetes Slack channel. Um, there was talk about should we um, merge the dev and the user channels so we just have one Slack channel because we don't really have a dev sort of stream going on and there's a lot of confusion in the community about where to post and most people end up cross posting just everywhere to try and get um, responses. So that was one of the discussions. Um, no movement on the um, community survey. Um, we need to chase that up. Um, Gritty had been away, so hopefully we can move that next meeting. And then a conversation that did come up um, was as we move to the new repos, is there a need to have the separate community repo? At the minute we have like a, a, a community repo in the um, OpenShift um, org, which has five documents in it. So as we move to an OKD um, organization out of the OpenShift organization, there was a discussion and again, I think we were going to defer to Diane and just ask if there was any reason why that needed to be kept separate or any sort of reasons why it was set up that way. If not, we could just merge um, that into the OKD repo. Um, I think in there, there was like a membership list and then there was the code of conduct um, it, it, within that one repo. Um, what else was did we talk about? Um, oh yeah, there was an interesting discussion within Red Hat. There was there'd been a meeting around um, setting up a new subgroup for the operator catalog. Um, th there's obviously some movement going on around creating an OKD version of the um, Red Hat. OCP catalog. Um, and I think that's probably a, a reasonable conversation for, for this group to actually, how do we want to handle that? Who should be on or who wants to be on it and things like that. So I'll defer that conversation. And I think that's all that we really looked at at the document meeting. Yeah, and we'll, t we'll take the uh, Slack channel thing as a separate item, new business um, in a second for context. There was a meeting just under two weeks ago that Sandro organized um, that was basically like, what's the roadmap? The, the virtual folks wanted to know what the roadmap is for OKD so that they could do their planning accordingly. And in that meeting, there was lots of discussion about uh, operators and operator hub, community catalog, OKD catalog. And it seems like folks are le leaning towards the idea of an OKD specific catalog. But as Brian said, like, well, who's going to be involved? How do things get vetted? Do we have access? There's lots of questions to that. So the idea was that um, the folks who are interested are going to get together. I've been engaged with um, Christian Hernandez on some of the um, GitOps pipeline questions that I had. Um, and, you know, he asked, well, do you want this? Is your thought that you'd want this to be in the community catalog? Uh, and yes, if not, you know, at the very least in the community catalog, but ideally in a new separate OKD catalog, you know. Yeah, and, and, and I think one of the big comments about having them in the community catalog is that would cause confusion for OCP users because then they'd see two versions of each Red Hat operator, right. one coming from the OCP um, behind the um, the user account sort of firewall and then one in the public community catalog and that wouldn't be a great user experience so that's why there is talk of a separate ocp cap and okd catalog so we wouldn't get that duplication of operators coming from the the community catalog for ocp users so i'm interested i think brian voiced an interest bruce voiced an interest uh in yep. um sort of tracking this down and whatnot so we're going to create a shared document and just start putting in um any information we can gather uh, about this and um the context of people that we're talking to 
and see if this will fly uh, as an idea. So folks are interested, just put your name um, in this particular agenda item uh, if you're interested in sort of participating in that sub-conversation. I don't know if we're gonna do like a, a full on like sub-working group or what. Um, I think it'll depend on what we find out after our initial exploration of, you know, are we able to have a separate OKD catalog? Do we get to maintain it in some way? You know, um, once those questions get answered, I think it'll determine the workload uh, for people. Any questions on that aspect? Comments on that? All right. Um, now let's uh, keep moving on to next up is, um, oh, and by the way, Diane does have now the credentials to the Twitter, she got them from Driti, but Diane is on vacation, so we don't have direct access for Twitter yet. Diane and I haven't arranged a handoff so that more than just her and Driti have the, the credentials. Um, but then we can start utilizing the Twitter. Uh, so issues, are there any issues in the OKD repo that stand out that folks want to talk about? It seems like a lot of them are really old. We haven't really had any new uh, issues pop up. It's just me, but um, I'm not really seeing anything in there. Isn't or worth talking about. I, I guess that's good. Maybe they all got resolved. All right. Uh, anything in terms of the discussion items? Does anything stand out in terms of uh, discussion items, we've got um, alert manager stuff. Uh, someone else was mentioning uh, alert manager stuff. That was you, right, Bruce? You had some alert manager issues as well. Yeah, no, when when I upgraded to the, uh, the latest version uh, on my test cluster, uh, which went, for, it was going from the, uh, I think the 12.12 version to the one that just came out. Uh, it went through everything, you know, perfectly updated all of the uh, operators, all of the nodes. And then finally, the alert manager uh, got in a, uh, you know, uh, crash uh, cycle. And uh, it, the, the uh, uh, this is like a, the, the alert manager main pods. Uh, which uh, each have five containers, so they seem to be fairly uh, complicated. But in any case, uh, they all were crashing with a, with about a six-line uh, message in the logs uh, saying that it was missing a port on my email address. And so in my spare time, I haven't had a lot of minutes to chase it down. I'm trying to find the uh, uh, offending YAML that uh, has the partial information that wasn't complete. Uh, I was also, of course, chasing the docs to see uh, if there should be configuration that was necessary that hadn't been necessary before, but uh, couldn't find anything yet. So it's still in progress. Uh, and, and I haven't quite gotten to the point of putting a discussion up. All right, and I see uh... We've got that, someone else has a discussion item on that. We've also got some stuff with um, operator stuff. Brian, you put one in on an operator. Which one was that? Yeah, I noticed that um, it looks like within the community operator hub installed on OKD in 4.9, there's now a dependency to the Red Hat Marketplace for the dev file operator, which obviously OKD doesn't have access to. Um, so even though the the, the CHE um, operator should work, the Eclipse sort of CHE operator should work, it doesn't anymore because of that dependency. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's something that's been done for OCP that's just right. been pushed into the community for OKD um, into that catalog. Um, which I think then goes back into the the whole catalog, operator catalog discussion for OKD. Right. Now, who would we contact for this particular one to get that looked at? 
Well, didn't we get a name from Diane? We did at the last one, but I don't know if that's for all. Uh, wasn't his? Yeah, we did. Wasn't Let's, <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, wasn't his responsibility the overall operator hub catalog? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, some, uh, I can't think of the name. It begins with an S. But we have it written down from the last meeting notes, and that's one of the people that we'll be reaching out. Right. Um, okay. And let's see if there's any other discussions worth noting here. Not really. The release stuff, we do want to promote um, the release uh, that just came out, the uh, 129, 4.9, 129 release. So we should do that via Twitter um, as soon as Diane is back, um, and also maybe through the website and whatnot. Uh, new items. Uh, shut down the dev slack. So the last person to talk to about this was Vadim to be sure that this wasn't going to cramp the style of um, of any of the Red Hat folks. Um, he's on board. Um, uh, Christian Glenbeck is on board. So uh, I guess we can shut it down. And people say merge it in, but I don't. There's really nothing happening there, so it's not like we're merging anything in there. Um, so I guess we will shut. Does anyone have any last thoughts on this before we go and request that it be shut down the Dev Slack channel? Sounds good. Yeah, actually, I, I note that uh, uh, Mike has doing been doing a really great job of like letting people know that it's up for dev questions only, and it's slated to be deprecated. Uh, so that's appreciated. Uh, okay, next up is uh, um, Docs Group to create a security posture. Um, that's still going to be happening. Um, send something out for security liaison. and I have something out, but without the Twitter, we can't really send, there's no place to send it, I guess. I mean, I guess we could put it on the website. Um, Charo was going to download the stats. Charo's not here. Um, meeting of the CRC group, that happened. Actually, that's done. Daniel has that info. Just on, on that one, um, should we do, is there anything we should do to look at the Microsoft? Because I noticed it, it actually mentions OKD within the, the project document, or the, the, within the project site. I'm just wondering, what is the role of DLC versus Microsoft? I don't know. That's a good question. Anyone? Because that seems to be aimed at, because I mean, what are the challenges we've always said with Ready containers is the memory footprint, and Microsoft seems to be addressing that in a big way. And would that be a better route for us to go down? Is there a need for CRC if we can get Microsoft? I know it's it's an early project; it's not yet sort of released, or it it is a sort of a an incubator it sort of project. Yeah. yeah. I'm a lot more optimistic about Microsoft being able to handle these cases than the current CRC, because the current CRC, I can't even run on any of my computers. Like, uh, what I think it would be worth it if we could bring the Microsoft people onto the OKD working group, uh, maybe either to give a presentation or a briefing or like talk to us about, about it, because I'm excited for the potential that we could have a new mini shift like experience using Microsoft because what we've got now is pretty inaccessible to most people to put it bluntly. Totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. Okay, so Microsoft invite, I'm just gonna add this to the to do's where the other item was. And um yeah, I think it's at least invite him to the meeting to talk about it and then uh, from there, like, just find out ways in which we can um, work together. So there we go. All right, that's added to it. And there's a link actually in the meeting notes to the to the MicroShift um, project, um, forward thinking. Uh, let's see, and Brian, clean up uh, the OKD repo of old guides. Uh, we need to meet with Vadim on that. Um, 
and decide like what needs to be maintained. Uh, I haven't had a chance to meet to set up a meeting with the three of us, um, uh, but can do so. Um, Diane came to the conclusion that there's really not much we can do in terms of getting the um, the OKD repos from the respective um, repository, the, uh, GitHub and GitLab. So we're going to go with OKD-project uh, and start moving things over. Uh, let's see, get usernames for, uh, for guides. Um, right, uh, I don't think uh, Daniel's done that right. And then the Dean. Uh, Brian, what did we have for overt? What was your task for overt? I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's right. That was part of this whole thing, right? Yeah, I, I was going to say that I, I don't know why this is still on the task list because we've got the list. I'm, I'm guessing we just don't know where to put it. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, 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 and then define the roles and responsibilities for what we want yeah. these people to do. But that's been there a while and I don't think anyone knows quite what to do with it. Yeah, so I'm, let me cross this out. And uh, the question now is, um, you know, let's say this is, uh, this GitHub usernames for guides on all platforms. Okay. We go clean that up a little bit. Okay, so we'll find the proper place to put those. Um, and the request is in for matrix. Is there any update on that, Neil? Yeah. So uh, it's uh, done. The room exists. Um, I I got it created uh, last week, and uh, I worked with Kevin Fenzi to figure out like some of the synchronization stuff. So now people can join the room and stuff. I think now. Um, where do we want to put docs about it and things? Because um, I don't know where we want to put it. Um, the room exists. Um, people can join it. I threw a link into the meeting notes as well, so it's it's there. Okay. Um, Brian, we probably want to add it to the website. Yeah. So. Uh, Tell me what to do, or help me figure out where I'm supposed to do it and how, and let, we can we can get it added. I would say put something in, uh, put a a uh, put an issue in the website repo, the OKD.io repo, and then Brian can work with you on getting that onto the website. Uh, All right. As soon as Diane, Diane is back, then we'll put it out over Twitter and, uh, and link to, we'll probably link to the web page as opposed to linking directly to the room because we're going to want to like have a little bit of pretext about like what it actually is because not everyone is going to know what Matrix is, right? So um, sure. I think yeah. that'll be helpful. Yeah. So why don't you, Neil, go ahead and put an issue in in the OKD.io repo and then work with Brian on coming up with a way to sort of wrap some text around the whole matrix thing and uh, where it is, and then um, then we'll promote it once that's done. Sounds good. I'll go ahead and start doing that then. Awesome. And I, 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 I guess the other thing around there is, I just think as we're shutting down other communication channels, I think we just want to be clear about what we expect to happen there, when people, right. when users should go there, why they would want to go, and sort of install the apps and get access to it and what is there and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. Because I, I think having clarity is is good. Yes, absolutely. So put that in there for sure, yeah. Uh, da, 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 let's see, what else do we have here? Um, Boston, uh fifth and sixth. And OpenShift Commons, February 9th. And um, there are the uh, DevConf uh, items which happened. And actually, Diane was not able to log into those remotely, so it was just Christian and um, uh, a couple of new people that showed up at the docs meeting last week. It was really cool. We've got uh, three new folks that are interested in participating in this group in one fashion or another. 
uh, and some of them were involved uh, with presentations uh, at uh, DEF CON. So very cool stuff. Uh, did I miss anything? Is there anything else we need to talk about? What was the new item about create a Google group for announcements? Oh, right. So the idea was that um, Sandra uh, put this two, in two instances within a 24 hour period, people were suggesting that folks go to the working group, Google group for user based stuff, or they had a posting in the working group. They linked to a posting in the working group email like, oh, I know what it was. Sandro linked to Vadim's email about the release, the most recent release. And then there was something else where someone suggested that they, the best place was in the working group. And so I'm starting to think, is there, do we want to maintain, and this is something that the docs group can, I guess, take up. Do we want to maintain an announcement email list, something that actually is pushed to people as opposed to the website and the chat areas. I know everyone's like, oh, not another communications channel, but a push thing people can sign up for or we can have, you know, we can add people or whatever um, is, so that they can get notice of new releases and things like that. Isn't that our, our Twitter account? Could be, yeah. Is that enough? Is it and then just, well, just, yeah. That's what Twitter's for in, in my book. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, I agree, so. Yeah, I, I wanna shut down, I, there's too many places. I can't Yeah, what can we do then to get Vadim's releases up on the website so that we don't have to link people to a Twitter post about it? I don't wanna, in other words, I, I don't like the idea of us linking to the working group for users to to see that, like they should have something a little more presentable, I think, about releases. I'm, I'm, I think that we need to have a conversation around pipelines and automation, because whether it's a GitHub action somewhere or whether we have a pipeline Tekton system mm -hmm. running, but I mean theoretically, if we should be able to create an automatic push to a page on the in the docs repo, yeah. which adds it as a banner to the, I mean, we can do something so it's at a banner. So it's like latest news banner appears on the front page of the website. Yeah, I like it. Anyone else have any thoughts on this stuff? All right, well, we'll take it up in the docs group and, and first off, we'll have to figure out the technology part and see, like, do we want this to be external? Um, you know, I can offer up a pipeline, a Tekton pipeline, but if we can do it with the Git pipelines, just as easy, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing because I saw some, some announcements that were almost ready to go back into mainstream, get out of Vadim's personal GitHub to do builds and releases. We, we, we were ready to reintegrate back into the main. Right. So I, I don't know whether that causes us additional challenges with doing builds within the Red Hat system versus outside of it in terms of pipeline. But yeah, I, I just think, I mean, there is automation that does the release. So as part of that, it'd be great if we could just have an automatic push that updates a banner somewhere. Yeah. We, we shouldn't have to do manual work to do these sort of things. For sure. All right, we will investigate that. Uh, any last minute things? All right, uh, well, let's uh, end this meeting uh, because we are, I think we've got everything. Dusty, did you have anything you wanted to add about latest uh, Fedora Core OS stuff? Uh, Dusty did end up logging in. Um, is there anything you wanted to add about latest news for FCOS that we should be aware of? I don't have anything off the top of my head. Uh, I know we're about to make a change related to IP tables slash NF tables. Um, 
but we'll send out an announcement about that shortly. We're basically just switching the default from IP tables legacy to NF tables. Uh, I don't. That matches, what, that matches what RHEL Core OS already does, doesn't it? Right, yeah. So RHEL 8, I guess, decided to bite that bullet early. Obviously, they're looking at supporting things for longer, and so they decided to make that change early, uh, earlier than Fedora did, I think. Um, and we didn't automatically pick up that change in Fedora Core OS because uh, the way it was implemented was via alternatives. There's some technical reasons why uh, alternatives don't actually get picked up and used correctly in, in our OS tree-based systems. So we missed the change originally uh, just because of that. Uh, and so this is us trying to get back in line with what the rest of Fedora is doing uh, by doing a migration for existing systems over to NFT. Uh, but we're also allowing people to choose to stay and not be migrated. Uh, so there's a com communication going out about that pretty soon. Um, but yeah, as far as OKD is concerned, I don't know if OKD already switches like systems that are start on Fedora Core OS to use IP tables NFT or not. Um, either way, it's something to look out for and just to make sure you're doing the right thing. Awesome. Thanks, Dusty. All right, folks, I think that's it. Uh, see you all at the docs meeting. If you're interested in the docs meeting, that's same uh, bat time, same bat channel next week. Uh, and then I'll see the rest of you all in two weeks uh, for our main meeting. And by then, Brian, Vadim, and I will have met uh, and hammer out these, these last few uh, items that we need to get to. All right, see you folks. I'll stop the recording yeah, well, now. Before, we all, before everyone goes, there's oh. a couple of quick things I want to point out. Um, I believe, uh, so this weekend is FOSDEM, and I believe Sandro is going to be talking about OKD virtualization there. So that's, uh, so if you're interested in checking that out, uh, uh, you can go to FOSDEM at- There's a link in the meeting notes for that one. Yeah. yeah. There's a link in the meeting notes for that. You can check out the general FOSDEM website. Um, there's also a CentOS Dojo um, that's preceding FOSDEM. And I don't know if there's anything particularly OKD relevant here. Probably not, but whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, and then there's also, uh, I put it in there, there's the uh, OpenShift Commons Gathering uh, on GitOps, and I'll be presenting on um, uh, the GitOps work uh, that I'm doing for ICPSR. Uh, and uh, I think Vadim is presenting something, or no, Christian uh, Hernandez is going to be presenting something. Uh, get the ops related, so. All right, folks, I'm going to stop recording, and um, thanks for coming to the meeting. We'll see you next time.